Hello friends, welcome to the next episode of Killer Frequency. <laughs> I'm loving this game so far. This this next episode, the playthrough it is going really good. I really enjoyed it. But I realized in post-editing that I had a little bit of a technical issue. When I recorded this episode, I had my headphones on my neck and I was playing my audio of the game through my speakers and just talking into my mic. So the positioning of my mic, uh, it made my voice pop and crackle a little bit because the microphone was in a different position right in front of my mouth so I did my best to edit that sorry for the issues uh, won't happen again in the next episode but all right let's get into it hope you enjoy Jams, baby. We're back. We're back in it. I don't remember where we left off. I had saved someone? Maybe I can... Oh, we got a call? I'm sure we're about to find out where I left off. Let's get going, Peggy. Let's get going, Alrighty. Peggy. We could run another segment or... Scratch that for us. We have a caller. We have a caller. You're through to 189.16, The Scream. Scream. What's your emergency? Hello again, Forrest. Oh, that call with the teens was... Oh, it's the lady with the hot voice. Kids. Still, I'm, I'm glad the girl didn't get hurt. Thanks. Yeah, I think only one concern. person died. Are you in trouble? What's on your mind? I wanted to ask you again to play my song, Forrest. You said you were going to play it, but you didn't. Your oh, name was Dawn, right? Oh, Dawn, that's Peggy. it. Yes. Oh, well remembered. My name is Dawn. Look, clearly she wasn't listening because we talked about not having her song. Forest. Long ride home? We don't yeah. have it. Peggy the one that Peggy threw, threw it out the window. Outside the window? You heard that? Oh, God. You must really love that song. If you're I knew that I was going to have to go out and get it. I knew it. I knew it was going to happen. Oh, I, I do love it. And I don't want to argue, but you, but do you really have it. want it. It's just outside the window. I knew it. I was gonna have to go out knows. there and get it. I can't just. She go wants me to go outside with the serial the killer. This lady. I'm really Dawn, sorry, you're Dawn. Sus. But we just can't get it right now. But wasn't the whistling man just at the old? Oh house? God. It's he can teleport though. The station. It won't take a second to grab it. He's fast. Don, I'm not sure if you've heard, but there's. Something unnatural about this freak. He's he's fast. I'm not risking it. Oh, but I think you will. Oh. Forrest, Peggy, I'm, I'm calling with more than a request. I know something. She knows what happened. I think I know who's going to be next. <gasps> what? Are you serious? Play my song, Forrest, and you'll find out. Oh, this bitch. Uh, well, folks, oh. here's some music for you while I think things over. I'm just keeping keeping what we got going. You Always like introduce this next song. song. Always. Is she serious, Peggy? She's serious about hearing that song, that's for sure. Peggy, I mean, is she serious about... I don't know, Forrest, but we don't really have a choice, do we? If she's telling the truth... What? Yeah, fuck you, Peggy. Why don't yeah, you go? You've been in it all night. And get it. It's one of Reggie's KFAM regulations. Always citing regulations. I can't leave the booth while we're on air. Well, let's hey. go off air then. Just, you can do it, okay? Fine. You're Fine. a good man, Forrest. Why did you pause? I'll slide you the key to the fire door. <laughs> wait, wait. Our fire door has to be unlocked? Hold on, the yeah, fire door it, has to be unlocked uh, from the inside? You know, I never thought about it, but yeah. That's not we should talk to Reggie oh God, about that. That's later. not much of. A yeah, anyway, we should. I'll hold the fort down while you're out. Maybe I'll even get a caller. That could be exciting. 189.16. The screw. With me, Peggy. Peggy wishes. <laughs> oh boy. Thanks, Peggy. Peggy, I feel like this is all your fault somehow. Okay. Okay. I knew, I knew, 
that I was going to have to go outside at some point in the back alleyway. I knew it. This is Peggy. If I die, it's Peggy's fault. She killed me. 100% on Peggy here. Oh boy. Here we go. Oh, this is the alleyway from the beginning. <gasps> you know, I hope she'll be happy when I'm brutally murdered by the whistling man. That's it. I was thinking that too. Out here. In the open. Hello. Spooky alleyway. Because Peggy got mad at somebody and threw the record out the window. Like a fool. It is nice out though. Looks like a nice night. What the fuck was that? Okay. Can I go this way? No. Okay. Alright. I wish I could sprint. I wish I could jump. I would... Was that me? Oh, that wasn't me. I would parkour the shit out of this just to get away. This is definitely where the homeless guy got murdered. At the start. Oh, <gasps> what the fuck? <gasps> oh, that was him. He looked right... <sighs> oh, he... He knows that I'm here. I feel like he doesn't want to kill me though. Okay, I'm a little freaked out now. Oh, fuck. <clears throat> Which window would she have thrown it out of? What the fuck? Alright. I don't know what that was. He was over this way. And he walked to the this direction. Is it in the garbage? This is definitely the alleyway. So he was right back here marking somebody in the beginning. I can't climb anything, so I guess I just gotta look around for it. <sighs> I don't want to go over to where he was. Can't go in there. Oh, here we go. Fuck here you, Peggy. Long ride home. By the barn finds. <gasps> What's that do? <gasps> oh. Is this a... Did he shut the... Ooh, I'm gonna have to find fuses or something. I'm gonna do that now. I just happened to notice that. Maybe I can't, though. It might, it might not be able to pick him up until I have to... Oh, God. He's definitely gonna... Alright, there's one. Bam. Last one. Three, six... It says 70. So, 65, green is 5, bam. Bingo! Bingo. Oh, I was locked out. I had to do this. Where? Did, where? I was locked out and didn't, didn't even realize it. Okay. Okay. That was a really loud noise. Oh! <gasps> Oh, I, I knew I knew I was gonna have to go in the basement. I knew it. Okay. Okay. I could probably survive that fall. Pro that's f it's four feet. What do you mean? Okay. All right, Forest. Okay. Okay. Head on a swivel. That copper is probably worth a lot of money right now. Hello. Nothing. Looks like the janitor's closet. What did Peggy say his name was? Oh, Clive. Oh, Clive was one of the. Ooh, Clive is one of the suspect names. Oh, Clive has a secret freaking room. Are you kidding me? Oh no way, Clive. Oh my God. Here's the thumbnail right here. Bam, thumbnail. Clive is definitely. What the hell? Peggy is not gonna believe this. Oh, what the hell? He's got creepy pictures. Okay. What in the hell? Maybe there's more than one? Oh, God, Clive. Oh, why? I don't like that. Why do they have the. I mean, I'm taking that with me. Why? Ooh. There's a key. 
I'll Basement just take stairs. that. Might be important. Oh, he's got one of those little forever motion thingies. Okay. Screwdriver. Bim bam. Zap the zerp away. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. What are we pointing at? Over this way. Okay. What does this say? Call for donations to help Chuck Brody. Former Gallus High football captain Chuck Brody suffered a career-ending injury as a victim of a festival disaster late last year. To help him on his road to recovery, we are buying some lottery tickets. Hopefully he gets lucky and can get back on his feet. Pun not intended. Drop tickets in the bucket below. Gas station, trailer park, power station hospital. Gallows Creek. Oh, I need some light. Need some light. Oh no, come back. Come back. Come back. Let me read. Stop! I'm trying to read this. Stop! Stop! I'm trying to read. Keith Walker Science Club, class of 69. Mary Campbell drains and through. Okay, so we circled Kim Walker, Rebecca Allen, Chuck Brody, Aunt Williams. Car Club, Athletics Club, Car Club, Improv Club. But he was also a member of the car club. I'm close, I'm close. I'm assuming I'll come back to this. Okay. Is there anything else? I'm gonna take the creepy, <laughs> creepy mannequin parts with me. Okay. Okay, that's, yeah, that's... Clearly active. Does nobody ever come down here? There's just piles of garbage. Ooh. Don't want to be making a whole ton of noise. I'm just walking around with mannequin parts. Hmm. I wonder how the show's going. Probably not great. Oh, there's another room I can't go into. Man, this place just keeps getting bigger. Okay. Alright, I'm going back upstairs. Fuck this. Oh, I don't want to go back out. Can I lock that? Please? I would like to lock the door. Uh, let me in. Peggy, I got mannequin parts. They're creepy. And in the basement. I'm going to get back and Peggy's just dead, smattered all over the room. She's in the fucking safe room. I gotta walk her and be all the dangerous Isn't that crap. such a good song, folks? And now for... Jesus, Forrest, you've been gone for ages. I thought something had happened. Yeah. Something did happen. Clive the janitor? Peggy. Mikey. Clive the murderer. What? Yeah. Stop from the beginning. The, uh, Peggy, do you see me with creepy mannequin parts? Look at this. Look at it. I still Why have it. Why did you heave that thing oh, all the way up here? Well, uh, because the basement's creepy as hell. She has I've run it I don't up here. like standing <laughs> around down there. Fair. All right, let's run through this again. We have a creepy board you found in a creepy basement. Yeah. Made by our creepy janitor. Yes. Who you think is the creepy whistling man. Well, I don't know that yep. for sure. Maybe. And on the creepy Suspect. board are the names Chuck Brody, Kim Walker, Rebecca Allen and Aunt Williams. Correct. Correct. And you think one of these people will be the whistling man's Clive's next target? That's right. Potentially. And we've got to find them. You said there are four locations listed there too? Yes. The hospital, the power station, the gas station, and the trailer park. Correct. Clive must think the target is at one of those locations. Forrest, you're going to have to figure out if any of the potential targets are at one of these locations <clears throat> tonight. Hit the button if you need any help. What? I need help, Peggy. What do you mean? How's it going? Help me. Uh, it's not going well. Help me, Peggy. Use some help. You okay, let's review the basics. We need to work out who the next target is. Yeah. There's four locations, right? Yeah. And four people. Yeah. We need to figure out if anyone is at any of the four locations tonight. And if they are, we can call them and warn them. 
There must be strong connections between the notes. That makes sense. Of Great. course. Need any more help? Peggy, that was no uh, help at yes, all. please. Sure. I think you should be methodical with this. Oh my god, Peggy, Try this is not helping. Try grouping the by who about. I already did. You could also have a look at the dates and make a timeline. Maybe that will help rule out potential targets first. Got it. Thanks, Peggy. No problem. Okay, I didn't think of that. Okay. Oh! Oh, hey! No, I have to reorganize all that! Damn it! I just had it organized! Fuck! Ugh. Peggy. You're the worst. Nah, I don't mean that. You're cool. You're cool, Peggy. We're gonna have babies later. Not now. We're busy. Trying to not to die. Okay, so Kim's dead. Rebecca Allen left. Rebecca's out. Kim's out. Kim's dead. Rebecca's gone. She sold her trailer and she moved. New York. Aunt Williams, is he still alive? I think he is. Two year investigation of the festival is concluded. They have ordered to do community service. Okay. How long ago was that? So that was 72. 87, Rebecca left. When did she die? 77 is when she died. Wait a minute. This is Kay Stein. Because she got married and changed her name. That was 77. 1987. Featuring... Sp but how is that possible? She's dead. Oh. Oh, never mind. Oh, okay, okay. That has a flu, but it's got him on it. 87. So that's actually him. It has the flu shot, but... Okay, that makes more sense. Oh, it's gotta be Ant. Rebecca's gone. Kim's dead. Chuck has a gas station. Is he still here? He's still here. But Chuck didn't do anything. Oh, it's Ant. It's for sure Ant. Wait a minute, but the power station was already... Oh no, that was waste disposal, it wasn't the power station. <gasps> power station's next. Ironside power station. Okay, let me, let me mark this. Bam. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, power station it is, I know which one. How's it going? Peggy, I'm ready. I'm ready, Peggy. Are you sure? I'm a detective. I'm an excellent detective. This. Oh, let's do this, I'm Peggy. Sure. It's the power let's station. I am this. certain. Okay, name first. Oh, it's who Ant. Who do you think the target He's is? He's the one who caused the whole thing. It's definitely Ant. Because Chuck Brody is paralyzed. The other two are one's dead, one's gone. Aunt it's definitely Williams. Ant. And where will I find them? Power station. They mixed it up. They almost got me there. The power station. Okay, I'm dialing. One moment. Alright, let's see if I got it. Forrest, I'm through to the power plant, but... They say there isn't anyone by that name there. What? What? Then who? Ah! Jesus! It sounds like something blew up! What He's the? using bombs now? Oh! My god, the call board, it, I, one moment. <laughs> Forrest, I'm getting so many calls. Just let me, I'm going to take, take us one. off air for a moment. Take a call. No, Peggy, take a call. <sighs> oh, fuck. Okay. Peggy, this... What's happening in there? Peggy. Peggy. Don't keep me in the dark. I'm back. Oh. He blew up the gas station for I us. was wrong! Okay. I spoke to the fire department and the hospital. Oh my god, I was the wrong! The fire department is no. useless now, as you know. And, uh... Why did he blow up the gas the station? The only ambulance was at the gas station. Oh! I fucked up! you... 
You've got to say something on the radio. Oh my god! You have to tell the town. I'm putting us back on air. Now. Oh my god, yeah, how did it? Why would he blow up the I gas don't know station? I not this, but uh, the gas station's been bombed. Please, everyone. Why would he blow up the gas stay station? Stay safe, stay inside, and. Oh, just oh, bring Brody us into dead? some music, Forrest. How about Blast Processor, right? That seems fitting. Let's blow this up. <laughs> Here's some music while we regroup here on. Fan, what the fuck? Why did he blow the gas station up? The stream. Where is that? Gas station, gas station. I don't see it. Oh, did I miss the introduction? I might have. I don't care. I'm looking. There's got to be more in the basement to show us who Clive is targeting. And if that's the case, Why? we can get ahead of him. Stop the killings before they can happen. Forrest, we need to go back down. By we, you mean By me, we, you mean me, right? bitch. Yep. Fuck like you, I Peggy. Said, I need to Fuck handle you. all these calls. Maybe start with that creepy mannequin room you mentioned before. Oh my god. I still I have a lot to. of questions about those, by the way. Me too. Where is the gas station? Christine's gas and repair. Oh my god. Why did he blow that up? There was no reason to blow that up. That that didn't make any any amount of sense at all whatsoever, except to blow up the ambulance, I guess. But what the hell? That made no sense. This is Ant's fault. Ant is the one who did the tragedy thing. Why did he, I? I had to have missed something. I had to have. There's no way. Holy shit! He blew up the gas station. That's. Alright, he's like more than a ghost. But he's definitely a ghost, right? I mean, he teleports. I saw him teleport with my own eyes. Oh, God. Why? Why did he blow up the gas station? That didn't make any sense. Because Brody wasn't one of the guys that hunted down the whistling man in the original. Hmm. Oh. A key? Was this always here? Apparently. I must have missed it when I brought everything upstairs. Yes, yeah, must have, obviously. Oh boy. Well, I know what door that goes to, don't I? Okay. About to find something else creepy. Okay, hello, locked door. Look, if there's like a bomb station, then clearly. Hey, Forrest! Peggy, give me what some warning fuck, before Peggy? yelling down the intercom. Sorry. Oh my God. Press the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Oh, there's another board here. I don't have any markers, but whatever. Peggy. There's still more to do. Okay, I gotta look around this room first. It's an old radio thing. Oh, a tape. Peggy, I've found a tape and a map down here. A map of what? Looks like it might be to somewhere in this storage area. Weird. Well, maybe the tape will give us more information. Give it a play. Battery. Okay. Uh. George Barrow. George Barrow. 1968. That's when this all began for me. Follow the maps. Wait. Was that Clive? George Barrow? We all heard that he drowned after a night out drinking. Was it actually Clive? Has Clive really oh. been the whistling man for that long? He says I need to follow no. the maps and find the tapes. No, I guess can't. that's what this map is about. I think we need to see what else is hidden down here. Well, I'm definitely taking this tape with me. Could go for a drink. Oh shit! I don't remember the throw button. Ah! That didn't go far at all. Uh, I'll leave the tape here for a sec. I'm definitely bringing that upstairs though. Okay. Uh, what's this? Ooh. Thought I heard it. 
Fuck this room. This room is a little bit creepy. Time of autopsy is 7 a.m. Cause of death is asphyxiation from drowning. The degree of rigor mortis indicates that the subject has been deceased for five hours. That puts the time of death. Huh. Tape deck and documents at that little. Okay. I feel like I. Ooh. Okay, creepy music. What is this? Delivery note. Shipping date 2nd September 1987 from Starlink Security. An alarm system. Wait a minute. The gas station was blown up. We have the same security system as the gas station. Unable to install at Woodside Apartments. Client opted for manual installation at KFAM? Huh. Okay. Why? Factory X. Oh, this is going to be important, isn't it? Oh, this is for the security system? I'm going to have to do the security myself. Oh, God. Well, I'm keeping that. What do we got? Nothing. Is this, so the security system has to be down here, doesn't it? I'm going to keep this booklet. I just know this is going to come in handy. Alright, I'm looking for a little... I feel like I just want to... I, I want to crawl. Ah, here we go. Small lacerations to arms, legs, and face. Typically obtained by running this through looks useful. foliage. Severe blistering to the feet. So he was As though running. the deceased had been running without stopping. Drove out to investigate, was able to identify the body at the scene as that of George Barrow. Contacted the coroner's office. <gasps> oh, was the miss? Oh, was the whistling man a fake story? <gasps> they made up a story because they killed this guy. It's one more, it looks like. They made up the story and then buried it. They made up the whistling man. <gasps> oh, this is the ghost of George Barrow. They made it up. They killed the guy for some reason because they thought he was doing this shit. Here we go. And then they made him into the bad guy and it was a lie. <gasps> I figured it out. I figured it out. Game's over. We win. GG. Preliminary toxicology results shows no signs of inebriation. One more. Fan on it. Yeah, that's stress. That's a stress hormone. Stress in the immediate moments before death. Why are these tapes all split up? <laughs> uh, no fan. That can't be it. Can I go back here? Yeah. Is this the security system? No. Oh my god, I figured it out! They faked it! They they posed him! Additionally, there appears to be a post-mortem injury to the arm. It looks like it was trapped in a car door. What? Oh. Oh, there is another one. Buy some cabinets. Documents and a tape. Okay. Oh my god. This is the rabbit hole just goes deeper and deeper. That's got that's gotta be the security system right there. Ooh, the music. Why? Why? This is it right here. Why we why? This is like a hidden This is like a closed off hidden little room. Okay. My mouth is a little dry. I'm a little nervous. Oh, there's another clue. Oh my god, how many clues are there? That one's by a desk. This first, stay open. I'm this sorry. Has to be important. I'm sorry I made you do this, Virginia. <gasps> the deceased is a Caucasian male, age 18. The cause of death is established to be drowning. Abrasions were found on her knuckles, likely from getting into fights. <clears throat> no other injuries were observed. No evidence of foul play. Additionally, the preliminary toxicology report indicates the deceased had a high level of alcohol in their. <gasps> 
she faked it. Oh, she faked it. Who is this? Virginia. Oh, that's why he was trying to kill Virginia. I'm sorry I made you do this, Virginia. So Clive made him do it? I wish I could take all of these documents with me. I don't want to make 50 trips. opinion that the subject likely feared for his life and was chased, resulting in a fall from a height into a body of water where he hit his head, was knocked out, and drowned. Following that, he was moved. Dr. Silver, we need to have a talk. That's the sheriff. That recorder. That's Sheriff Matthews. Shut it off. That's Sheriff Matthews. That's why he killed the sheriff. Oh, I figured it out. I figured it out. They faked his death. They faked his death. And then they framed him as the whistling man. That's why the whistling man is now here. Running around trying to kill people. I need to get all of these documents back up here. But I don't want to make 50 trips. Here's the last one. I figured it out. I've solved the mystery. Ooh, Ooh found a, a record. new vinyl from my collection. I'm playing that when I get back. What is this? Humpty Dumpty. Story of love, tragedy, and betrayal. What the fuck? Okay. Starring Macy Cartwright. Cartwright! As Dawn. George Barrow as Henry. Oh! She said her name was Dawn, that caller. Macy Cartwright as Dawn. George Barrow as Henry. So her name is Macy Cartwright. Because she, pay, she pays the... Oh, I figured it out. She's connected. And the janitor is Clive. Oh, Dawn! Dawn was with George Barrow. George Barrow's the one that they faked his death as the whistling man. <gasps> That's why she's calling. Maybe that was their special song that she wants to listen to. She doesn't sound old. If you're listening to this, then I'm probably dead. What the? What? I'm a man who likes to stay informed. I've got subscriptions to newspapers all over the country. A few weeks ago, I noticed headlines cropping up in those papers, one after the other. Each headline about a murder. Was Clive? Each How murder, was he connected? The death of someone I knew almost 20 years ago. And each How was he connected? Drawing closer to Gallows Creek. Ooh. Drawing closer to the anniversary. None of us are innocent. But I don't think we deserve killing. How is Clive connected? All I hope now is that I can save some folk from the worst. And I can. I don't know. Do something to make up for what I did back then, I guess. I didn't kill anyone, mind you. But that's past mattering. Now, there's more I could say. You should say it. Say What? Spoke out. So, uh, hopefully I've said enough for you, listener, whoever the hell you are, to start putting the truth together. I'm missing some pieces, but I got most of it. What got the, the gist. hell? Peggy is not going to believe this. How is he connected? I don't understand who he is, Clive, in this situation. Also, I want to take all of these documents, but... So this is the fake... Virginia, you dirty bitch! I should have let him kill you. Oh, that's not the security. Uh, I definitely gotta set up the security system. And I wish I could have more than two items. Because I want to take all of these documents. These are important, incriminating documents that clear George Barrow's name. Maybe if I clear his name, I'll stop trying to kill everybody. Maybe not, though. I don't know. He's on a mission. Peggy, got some shit to tell you. What have you found, Forrest? Everything. It's an autopsy tape. Doesn't say for who, but... It's for George Barrow. I think it must be for George. Poor George. Clearly for George. He was so young. They framed Something's him, Peggy. Peggy. What do you mean? I swear I recognize the voice of the woman talking on the tape. I just... Virginia. Can't place it. it says I got it really? on the paper right here, Forrest. Do you think you've met her before? I don't know. Right I mean, here. I just got here recently. 
We talked to her on the radio. We saved her know. life. How could you possibly forget that? Found another tape that talks more about how George died. What did it say? It sounds like he was running for his life. Sprinting through trees and bushes, getting cut up all over. What would drive someone to do that? They were chasing sure it. I don't know why, though. There was a tape about a toxicology report. There were no signs of drinking or that he was on anything. What? But everyone said he went swimming drunk and drowned. It was in the newspaper and everything. Oh, yeah, they framed him, the sheriff. That's why the sheriff I found did it first. autopsy report. What did it say? According to that, it's just like you said at the start. George drowned after getting drunk. Said he liked to fight, too. But that contradicts the tape. I know. And I think I know why. There's a note with the report that says, I'm sorry I made you do this, Virginia. Oh, yeah. If it was on the autopsy report, then Virginia must be our coroner. Wait, the caller from earlier. When we Virginia. had to call the takeout restaurants, wasn't her name Virginia? Yeah. We need to call her back once we finish down here. It looks like, like she might know here. something about what's going on. Need to set up I found a tape that introduces a new detail to the us. story. Post-mortem injury. Apparently, his arm got caught in a car door. Yeah, that a doesn't make sense. Door? Yeah. Oh, they tried to move the body. It. How do you suppose they can tell? They tried to move. That's what happened. Tell? I'm a radio producer, not a coroner. Hmm. The written report I found doesn't mention it at all. They How killed him and then moved the body. The car door oh. after he died. Mm. Unless he got it when the police collected his body. Yeah. I guess someone else must have moved him after he was dead to where he was eventually found. So George was murdered. What is going on here? Don't know why. I found the police framed it. Mentions a friend from earlier, Sandra Sharp. Sandra, the jazz runner. That's right. She found. Oh, she's the one that found the body. Oh, the reservoir. It's all connected. Yeah. What's strange about that? George got cuts from running through foliage, right? But there's no forest around there. Also, oh. how did it wash up at the reservoir? What do you mean? They moved it. Reservoirs don't have tides. But that's what the police report said. It's not possible, though. I did a school project on reservoirs and got an A. But, yeah, not important right now. The important thing is that it doesn't make sense. You can talk. I'll just what cut it out. Just not what I'm... That the body was originally found somewhere other than what the report nice. suggests. That the sheriff tried to cover it up, but accidentally let something slip? He did. He something let something like slip. He framed him for something. But why? I don't well, know why they killed sheriff George. Matthews wrote the report. If he hadn't been eviscerated, we Yeah, we could interrogate him. him. His ass. But Sandra is still alive. Oh, jazz hands. Once she knows. Once down here, we should give her a call. In I got a lot of people to call. The coroner comes to the same conclusion as I did. George was running from something. Maybe... Maybe. No, but it wasn't an animal. This next he was framed for something. The coroner thinks he was moved post death. So she agrees with us. Yes. At the end of the tape, someone burst in and demanded. It was Virginia clearly the sheriff. Recording. I or Clive. Think it was Clive. Well, who the fuck is Clive? How does Clive fit into this whole thing? This, this is a conspiracy to cover up yes. what happened to George. Yes, Peggy. Yes. I um, I think I found Clive's last recording. Oh, well, Clive is definitely dead. I think Clive might be gone. He definitely killed Clive. I found a confession. Not for any killings, but for playing a part in covering up What part George's did Clive death. play? That's what I don't he know. He left this behind in case he died. He hoped someone would find it. You... Do you think the Whistling Man already got him? Oh, yeah. Possibly. We've had a lot of callers for sure. tonight. He works here in the station. Maybe not every victim made it to the phone, you know? We don't know how many there really are. Christ, Forrest, that's dark. I know, but Clive said he had read what about murder other dark. murders in other towns, and that the so murders everyone that were knew. all folks who knew about the incident. And the killings were getting closer to Gallows Creek. Because people left or whatever. He said he wanted to do something good for once. What did he do, though? That's why I don't know what Clive fits into this. He wasn't tracking people down to kill them. He was tracking them down to save them. Trying to save him. Why didn't didn't he work just out come well. Out with all of this? Uh, he said Who was his employer <gasps> threatened to The K Fam guy? He spoke out about any of it. The owner of the K Fam thing. The one who orchestrated the cover up? What's his name? Oh, Clive. I can't remember his name. You'd kill them. My boss. 
do you think you found everything? <sighs> think so. I think so. Forrest, what's going on here? Conspiracy Someone cover up. wanted that boy's death to seem like an accident. Why? And they hired Clive to make it look that way. Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. We need to figure out our next step. Thank God you're back, Forrest. I've been running out of stuff to pad our airtime with. Peggy, you work in radio. Forrest, I'm stressed. I mean, really. How are we supposed to keep a show going with all this happening? I don't know, Peggy. What do you think? We're going to talk. This is our job, Peggy. We, we got to do it. <sighs> You're right. So, what's the plan now? I think we should call we'll Virginia, call Virginia. Back. All right. I'll get her on the line. And Sarah. Or Sandra. Okay, Forrest. Shut the music off. Hello again, Gallows Creek. This is Forrest Nash. We're circling closer to the truth behind tonight's the events. I'm at cheers. To this end, we're calling back one of our earlier callers, Virginia Sullivan. We're getting to the bottom of this shit. Fredman Plunker here. Oh, Plunker's there. Who's this? Is it you? Plunker. Who's... No, it's Plunker. Plunker. Hey, it's the Radio Man. Hey, Plunker. Nash. Radio Man? I love Plunker. <laughs> so of industry saving lives. The huge. Right, 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 right track. <laughs> Plunker, what are you doing at Virginia's house? She asked if we could stay to keep an eye out for that whistling turd. Good man, Plunker. So we're hanging out, bro. Drinking. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's big of you, Plunker. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. It's nothing. <sighs> Can I speak to Virginia? Oh, I bet she's sure gone. thing, Radio Man. I'll just go get her. Who is this? Oh, that was hey, fast. Hey, Virginia, it's Hey, she's Forrest. alive. I'm Virginia, we know what you did, okay. bitch. Oh. Forrest. Sorry, I'm still jumpy. Yeah, you should be. I'd be jumpy, too. I can't blame you. I'd be jumpy, too. I'm so sorry this happened to you, Virginia. I'm not sorry. She did I this. I was. I thought... Virginia, you did this. Easy. We're not calling to talk about earlier. We're calling because we think We're calling you to talk can about help us understand earlier. why this Way is happening earlier. Tonight. Years ago. Me? What would I know? Oh, Virginia, come on. Come on. Well, can you think of any reason why you'd have been targeted? Oh, Virginia, no, you know. Oh, I don't think so. Bullshit, Virginia. Right. When you were attacked earlier, you mentioned a name. Clive. I don't know what I said then. I was petrified. Oh, she knows. She Clive's knows exactly what's going on. At our station. I should have let that man kill you, bitch. Forrest, please. You don't know what you're doing. No. He'll come for me. Virginia, it's okay. Clive won't be coming after you. We think Clive's dead. Dead? But isn't he? He's the whistle. No, he's not. Man. Why are you so certain Clive's the Whistling Man? Because he... All those years he ago, what? he... Virginia. It's okay, Virginia. He's gone. We found evidence to suggest he... Well... And we found your autopsy reports for George Barrow. Busted. How? I saw him destroy them. Well, he didn't. I don't know if he kept them or made copies or what, but we found them. And we know it's related to what's happening tonight, which is why we called you. Why did you write a false report? I... Yeah, Virginia. All right. One day, I came into work to find a... a boy on my slab. And as I finished the autopsy, this man, Clive, he just burst in. I don't want this thing to... He started making demands to give over the reports, oh to God. falsify what I found. Of course I said no. I don't believe but, you. Well, when someone wants to make you do something, they can use the carrot or the stick. Oh, you did it For anyway. Me, he used both. You see, my sister is sick. She has a chronic condition that's never going away. 
It's expensive to treat, and it was getting to where I couldn't afford. Clive it. isn't even the. And Clive. Clive was doing it because someone else made him do it. Would pay for my yeah, the employer. Treatment. That's it. If I did what he said, it's the guy that owns Cave Fan. If I ever spoke about this, he'd beat me to within an inch of my Reggie? life. Reggie, I can't remember his I name. I don't know why he had me do it, but my sister needed me. You have to understand, she needed me. We understand. No. Nope. Speak for yourself, Peggy. You helped cover up the death of a child. Yeah. Forest. But Peggy. But he threatened me. Don't care. And my sister. You abused your power to help yourself. Yeah. Oh, God. Forrest, that wasn't necessary. Yes, it was. It needed to be said. She did it. Peggy. So, Virginia is tied up in all of this. Clive threatened her to keep quiet about George's death. But so? for who? Why cover up these details? Hmm. Because he knows? Well, we know Sandra oh, was Sandra. involved yeah, in George's death. Sandra. Do you want to call her? I yeah. do. We're going to talk to Jazz right. Hands. But before we go asking she questions, found the body. I think we should know what we want to ask. Is that fair? Yeah. We need to ask her about finding the body. She was the one who and discovered it. what happened it, after? Something just doesn't add up. A hundred percent. She knows more than she's saying. She I definitely wonder knows more. Not, not, none of these people are targeted we'll for no reason. We'll hopefully find out soon. Anyway. Just be careful when you're talking to her. Don't push too hard. We don't want her to hang up. Peggy, we want careful. the truth. All right, calling her now. Hopefully she's at her jazz studio. Where the whistling man was trying to kill her? Why would she stay there? Peggy, we want the truth. I will uh -huh. push as hard First, as I need to. Through. Hello, this is Sandra at Jazz Pizzazz Jazz Studio. Who is it? Jazz Pizzazz Jazz Hello Studio. Hello again, Sandra. <laughs> it's Forrest Nash of 189.16. Sandra, why did you help cover up a murder? <laughs> I always thought folks Wish called into justice. a radio show, not the other way around. Well, you did help cover up the murder of a child, Sandra. Uh, well, <laughs> we're trying to understand what's behind the attacks tonight. Why we did you lie about the body? By forest. That would be my first question. Forest. Heck, after the way you saved my life, you owe me. I'd say yes to saved just about anything you asked. Oh, okay. I don't want to flirt with her. Maybe I should butter her up a little bit. Really? Well, that sounds nice. Gotta butter her up a little bit. I might just call you back tomorrow then, too. The shit out of her. Oh, you got my number. Weaken her. But what about tonight? Is there anything Ooh, you want to talk about right now? Remember why we called, Forrest? Of um, course. It's cl calm Do you know down, why Peggy. The whistling man Classical interrogation might have technique. targeted you. Ha! As far as I can tell, he was just a knife wielding psycho with superhuman cardio. Well, what about he the body? He after anybody. Right. Well,. We think he might be chasing well, specific we know. people. We know. People who know about the death of a boy named George. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Sorry. Oh. See, now we play hardball. We weakened her a little bit. Weakened her resolve. Sandra, we know you found George's body. We have the police report. I... I don't know what you mean. Oh, you know. Oh, uh, you hear that? Don't be a liar, Sandra. Don't be a liar, Sandra. It doesn't suit you. See? I'm not lying. I... Fake left and move right. Fake her out I... a little bit. Pat her down the walls. Oh, look at the time. Jury's late. Sandra, don't you dare hang up. I'll drive home now or just... Drive. Sandra, don't you hang up the I'm... phone. I'm sorry. What are you sorry for, Sandra? No! Damn it! Well? I might have gone a bit hard on her. You know what? A you gotta bit? go hard. All right, all right. Let's just... Move on. <laughs> you well, need to folks, go hard to get the truth. If anyone out there has any thoughts on what's going on tonight, please call in. That's good timing. <sighs> We've got a call waiting just this second. Oh, perfect. Welcome to 189.16 The Scream with me, your host, Hi, Boris. I know this is out of the blue with everything happening tonight. But I wondered if you could send this special birthday message. This is clearly Ponty. No. No? I don't wanna. Oh, <laughs> I know it's Ponty. It's his I don't wanna. I won't have a chance to do it again. This is clearly Ponty. May as well, Forrest. Peggy, uh, this is clearly Ponty. Hi. What's his name? Thank you, Forrest. He's my Uncle, Uncle Roni. Pepperoni. His first name's Peter. Peter Roni. Peter Pepperoni. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. 
Pepperoni because it's Pondy's Pizza. Uh, thanks for the history lesson. Is there anything besides happy birthday you'd like to say to Mr. Pepperoni? Mr. Pepperoni, he gets it. Yes! Tell yes! Him he can get the best birthday deals and party packages here at Pondy's Pizza. Stop Tell him about Peggy. You son of a bitch, stop calling us. Well, damn it, Peggy. This is your fault. My fault? Yeah, Peggy. I said I didn't want to do it. Don't blame me because Brian Ponty can't control himself. I love Ponty. <laughs> Don't worry. We've already got another caller on the line. Just pick it up, okay? Look. 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 Grab the rope. Grab it. Grab it. All right. This is 189.16, uh. The Scream. I'm Forrest Nash. You're on the Good air, girl. caller. Oh. What the fuck? He's crying. Caller. Stop crying and, and talk. Use your words. <sighs> oh, he's laughing? Oh. Ponty. Oh, that's creepy. God damn it, it's Ponty again. Come rain or sleet or whistling man, we'll be oh, there. <laughs> Mad victory cackling. <laughs> Forest? Forest, are you I'm gonna have an okay? aneurysm because of Ponty. <sighs> Angry breathing. <sighs> Forest? I hope the whistling man gets in with his own pizza slicer. Jesus, <laughs> Forrest? Sorry, sorry, that was... That was too much. Was too it's much. okay. It's been a high-stress night. Fucking Ponty. Anymore, okay? Not for tonight, anyway. I think he's spent for now. We've got another call. Whenever you're ready. If this is Ponty, I will go there and Folks, stomp his ass out. Don't spend your money at Ponty's Pizza. That's all I'm gonna say about that. That's all I'm gonna say about Moving that. Moving along, I'd like to welcome another caller to 189.16, The Scream, with me, Forrest Nash. Who may I say is calling? Well, hello again, Forrest. Don. Oh, Don. Uh, oh. I bet I know why you're calling. She's the, sorry, oh no, I, I think she's song. involved. There's a lot going on. But please? I uh, never mind that now. She was in the play. Dawn's a fake name. I need your help. Yep. Ooh. Are you in Dawn danger? was in the play with George. I sure am. I figured this Do is a fake mean, name. Her real name is yes, Maisie. He's after me now. You? Uh, I think so. He must have heard me on the radio helping you. Helping? You didn't, didn't exactly, exactly help, help Dawn. Maybe I've been helping more than you know. She I is was involved. I following a lead, trying to work out who would be next, after Chuck. And what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. So I came back to my apartment building, but this new Dawn's involved. system has me She's Maisie. I saw it in the playwright. I need you to help me get inside. Is it a key? Don't you have a key to get in? Only for the apartment door. The front gate requires an entry code. Oh, this is one of the security the things. electronic, I guess. I need that code to get inside. Guess what I got Which for you. What block do you live in? Bam. Maybe one of our listeners lives there, too. It's the New Woodside apartment building. What the hell the is that? I doubt any of your listeners live there. I don't have many oh, it's a train. Neighbors. Sounds like a prime piece of real estate. Yeah, Styling right. 4000. User manual. Ah, these codes should come in handy. Sound really carries at night. Oh, I need the other thing though. Shit. Bark and how? Was that a dog? Is that a neighbor's dog? Yes, it is. Okay. Boy, I wish he muscled that thing and oh. And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. Well. I can't get any. Ooh. I don't think he's seen me yet. Forrest, please. I need your help. I oh, need is this time? for that security system <gasps> or I'm going to die. Oh, shit. What's the name of the security system? Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says Starling Security 4000 is keypad. And it looks like it wants a, a six digit number. <sighs> we'll see what we can do. Thank you, Forrest. Yeah, of course. Don't worry, Don. Thank Please you, Forrest. Please change the code immediately to prevent unwanted attention. I'll sit out of sight. 
Call me back soon. All right, I'm gonna go. I gotta go and find that installation. All right, folks. Uh, uh, Here's manifest. a little tune for you all to enjoy while I try to break Dawn into her apartment. What is this? What is this? It doesn't say. Oh, uh, tell me, tell me, tell me. Not telling me. All right, whatever. Peggy. Coming up for your listening pleasure, it's Caged Tiger with their single, One Last Goodbye. You were pretty quiet there, Peggy. Forrest, was it just me, or was there something... Yeah, it wasn't just you. Something was weird about that. Yeah. Well, tell you what. We have a Starling 4000, or whatever, here at KFAM. Clive bought one for the station. Maybe we can find something to help. Well, I'm not sure who. But to help someone. Yep, I'm on it. I gotta go and find that installation manifest. <sighs> okay, so she's locked out of the Woodside Apartments, and somewhere, Clive probably has the papers for the Starlink 4000. Yeah, buddy. So I do have to go back in the basement. Okay. So the code wasn't even installed. All right. Peggy, let's Welcome do this. Back, Forrest. Find anything? Oh shit. Starling 4000 security manual. It's got a bunch of codes. You got a bunch Good. of codes. And did you find anything else? I yep. saw a list of everyone else who bought the Starling 4000. We got one here. Know who was on there? Oh Clive. my god. Roller Ricky. I was he? Do you think we should give him a call? Is that crazy? I don't know what you'd say, but Who was Roller Ricky? Just put me through to Don. I'll take care of this one way or another. Okay, if you say so. When you're ready, oh, shut yeah, the music the... off. Oh, I remember now. Line one, whenever you're ready. Don, are you there? He this is the Forrest Nash from 189.16, The she Scream. Have... Oh, thank God you're back. I'm so afraid. What's the code to the gate? Set off all security measures. Alarm test. Oh god. How about alarm deactivation code? The code is 811220. Thank you, Forrest. Alarm has already deactivated. The alarm deactivation. Had to be. <gasps> I think you gave me the wrong number on purpose. Well, I'll just do this the hard way. Well, I had to make sure. <gasps> oh my. It said it was what? deactivated! What did we do? Oh my god. No! Oh my god. <gasps> what on earth is happening? What did I just do? Oh my god, I tried to deactivate the alarm! Ricky! Ricky! Hello? Hello? Forrest? Is that you? Did you have something to do with this? Ricky, whoever that was, she was trying to get into the building. I tried to help, but... She... Forrest, man, you got no idea. That was him! What? That was the whistling man! The alarm gave me just enough time to get my rifle... Oh, did I do the right thing? Maxie, I'm coming, buddy! Forrest, I've gotta go, I've gotta go! Come on, Maxie, stay strong! Oh, I accidentally okay. did the right thing! Okay, yeah, cool! Woo. Here's some music. Oh, I saved, I saved him. What okay. Woo! Just happened. <laughs> I saved him, I saved him, I saved Ricky! Okay, cool, alright, I'm not mad anymore. Holy shit, that was crazy. We're definitely playing this one. Holy shit, so that was wild. The whistling man. Is a woman? I did not work it out a while ago. <laughs> I thought it was the ghost of George. I know. I, I can't so she's out for revenge because she, she was up. the girlfriend we when they were to kids. Her multiple times. I didn't think she was. She seemed normal. Yeah, she seemed pretty normal. Why do you think she requested that song? That was their song. I got that part. Don't need those. That was their song. Maybe she actually I wanted mean, it. 
Maybe she actually wanted it. Could be her No, she was with George. Someone. I saw the oh, fucking playwright. So? What now? The I guess play I itinerary. An announcement. We do have new info. Okay, kill the music and you can make the announcement. I know her name too. Okay, I know lying. her name. In three, two. Hey folks, this is Forrest Nash here. Her I name is Maisie. All safely locked inside. But how Those does she teleport though? You literally call, you might be wondering teleporting. what to make of it all. That doesn't make sense. Here's our take. We now She's magic. believe the She's killer a witch. is actually a woman. One who might manipulate you into letting her in before she attacks you. I gotta you. go and get that playwright because I have her name. I probably can't leave right now. I want to go grab it. It probably won't let me. Ah, oh, fuck. I should have grabbed it when I was down there. We're neighbors. Look out for each other and stay safe. Stay safe, everybody. The killer was calling themselves Dawn. Her name is Maisie. I figured it out. This could be a fake name. If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, please call in. You folks have my new number, right? It's 911. It's 911. Hopefully, our next caller can help shed some light Amazing on Amazing something. Killer. I don't remember the last name. Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, folks. Time to take a call. You're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16, The Scream. Hey, man. Murphy? Murphy? Damn straight. What's Damn going straight. on, Murphy? You in danger again? No, nah, man. I've just been listening to the show here at home. And since you asked folks to call in if they could help out, well, I'm calling. I don't know if I can say as much as other folks have, but uh, I figure I wouldn't be a good role model to Fernando if I didn't try to help, you know? You're a good father. You're a good father, Murphy. Absolutely. Fernando's a lucky kid. Oh, thanks. So, uh, what do you want to know? What do you want to know? Well, what, what can, can you, you tell, tell us? Uh, I don't know, really. So why'd you All call? Right. Well, what do the fuck? <laughs> you know anything about the death of George Barrow? Absolutely nothing. Okay. What about the killer herself? Her the girlfriend. I figured it out. Man, I, I didn't get my ass kicked by a lady. You did, Murphy. You did. Well, I went toe to toe. It was a man, man. You heard the a last man. call, right, Maybe Murphy? there's more than one. Yep. So you know it's a woman, and you were trained by a VHS, Murphy. Well, I, I know, but man, how could it have been a woman under that mask? She's yes, a ghost. She's got some kind Do of supernatural you know teleporting powers. About the history of the Whistling Man? No, sir. Tonight's the first time I ever heard of him. What? I moved here three years ago, man. What do you want from me? <laughs> hey, man, no worries. Just thank you for trying. Right. Sorry I couldn't help you all more, man. I thought I killed now, Ricky. I'm so glad I did it. I was flopping. Well, I was going to Sorry, Murphy. I think that's all we've got time for right now. Uh, all right, all right. I'll catch y'all with the gator talk later. Not Well, folks, Not. that was a bust. But perhaps our next caller has more they can tell us. Let's find out. This is Forrest Nash, and you're listening. Please help me. My name is Casey Moore. I'm a 25 Nancy Drive. My best friend's been stabbed. He's, Who's your he's bleeding everywhere. I don't know what to do. Please help me. Well, stop the bleeding. Is he still breathing? Yeah, but if he's bleeding out fast, I really need help, please. Take a breath. We've been out at the reservoir. We were heading back to his place. Reservoir. Whistling all of a sudden. He just started freaking out. He screamed at me. Told so they were down by the jazz studio. I've never seen him like that. And I, I just panicked and ran and hid in a bush. Oh no, Forrest. Then what happened? They just stabbed him. Was it a woman? Casey, was he talking to a woman? I don't know. They had a mask and wore all black. That's all I know. Please, we need help here. I'll get you right help, away. Calm down. I need you to know. stop the bleeding. Where did the masked person go? They left. They left him to bleed out. I waited until they were gone, then dragged him into the garage and called 911. 
Wait. Why didn't she make sure he was dead? I don't know. I think I heard them say something like, it's not so funny now, is it? Before they left, but... Please! He needs to get to the hospital! I can't drive, so... The ambulance is blown up. Forrest, the ambulance was destroyed in the explosion at the gas station. You should get all the info you can. Can where you is tell us where your friend was stabbed? They stabbed him in the stomach. Oh, he's got a long time. They stabbed him again in his leg when he oh, was on the ground. Not. And his... Never mind. Oh, the knife is still there in his leg. What's your friend's name, Casey? Probably gonna have to leave that Jason. there. Jason. Jason Parker. We'll be right back. Peggy, patch us through to the hospital. On it. Phoning St. Gabriel's now. Switch to line two. Hello, St. Gabriel's Hospital. How can I help you? Hi, this is Forrest Nash from 189. So they were down at the reservoir. <clears throat> we have a stab victim at 25 Nancy Drive named Jason Parker. He's been stabbed in the stomach and the leg. He's bleeding heavily. Oh, God, I'm sorry. But the ambulance is... Well, you know. Yeah, I know. I know. That was kind please, of my fault. We need sorry. something. Or he's going to die. <laughs> it wasn't my Forrest, fault. I, listen, you're going to have to get him here. We need to see him and we can't get there ourselves right now. We don't have any way to drive him right now. And even if we did, he's bleeding out Nancy. fast. Nancy. Where's Nancy? All right, listen. We need to buy him time to get here. Yeah. That means stopping the blood first and then finding someone to stabilize him. To yep. stabilize him, you really need someone. Oh, Nancy, right here. Training. Do either of you have any? No. Me neither. Uh, damn it. I'm really sorry about this, but I have other patients who can't wait. All I can do is talk you through the procedure as quick as I can. I got it. I mean, I kind of know what to do. You think you can handle that? I got it. We can handle it. I'm sure we can handle it. Okay, from the top. If he's bleeding out, then you need to get him comfortable and try to stem Stop the bleed. bleeding. Lay him down. Apply continuous pressure, pressure. directly to Elevate the his leg. areas. When the bleeding slows, get a clean cloth of some kind and hold it over the wounds. Get them comfortable. Apply pressure. Clean cloths when slowed. Got it. I think. You said he was stabbed, right? Stabbing in the gut, he's got a long time. Is still in him. Don't take it out. That's what I said. It's that was right. the worst of the bleeding right now. If anything, you should secure it so it stays where it is. I wouldn't have thought of that. It makes sense, though. God, that was a lot of info. It was not. But I think we can handle very this. Very simple first aid. Glad you got it so far, because there's more to go. Oh, yeah. Keep I'm going. still with you, Doc. What else do we need to know? If he's lost a lot of blood, he may enter shock. Yeah, that's if not good. If he does, act fast. If you apply a cloth and it's bleeding through, don't remove it. Just apply another on top of it. If it's safe, elevate his legs to get blood circulating to his vital organs. Try to keep him warm. Get him to rest and reassure him. We need the patient to stay calm. <sighs> All right. Uh, don't replace bandages. Elevate his legs. Keep him warm and Easy, calm. easy, peasy. This is a lot. I'm really sorry. No, it's not. That's as much as I can give you right now. Try to stop the bleeding. Find someone to get him Nailed stabilized it. and get him here as quick as you can. Good luck. All right, All right Nancy. Casey, Casey's still on line one. Let's do this. Hello? Oh, oh, Forrest, are you there? I'm here. I'm here. How is Jason doing? Fuck you, or Badly. this is about Jason. I need help. I've been putting pressure on his stomach wound since you left. Good. But he's still bleeding. Yeah. I don't know what to do. That's right. good, Casey. The nurse said to do that. What about Peggy, shut up and let me handle this. Bag? It's gotta be hell. No. Pull it out? Don't touch the knife. No, don't touch the knife. The bleeding will get worse if you pull it out. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm positive. Oh, I'm, I'm going to stop making suggestions. Good. No, please do don't that. don't worry, Casey. We're a team here. No, we're not. We're all going to get Jason through this. Casey, is his leg wound bleeding right now? Yeah, the stomach's gonna be way worse. Secure the knife. I'll probably just leave it alone. What did she say to do? If it's bleeding, secure it if we can. To secure the knife so it doesn't move around. Yeah. Do you have anything you can tie around it? Uh, yeah. I mean, just put a tourniquet so. on his leg. Laundry piled up on top of the dryer. Some cloths on the hood of the car, and what else? Tourniquet. Uh, I guess I've got my jacket. 
I use the. Oh, I don't know if that's dirty or not. Oh, jeez. Cleaning rags would be good because they're clean. Oh, oh, God, I don't know which one. I don't want to. Oh, well, use the laundry. Look in the laundry for something like a towel or a shirt. Hold that over the wound. Okay. Looks like I'm going to have to buy you some new whites, Jason. Here we go. Is she doing the knife for the gut wound? I'm sorry, Jason. I said secure the knife. It's secure. I'm putting pressure on his stomach okay. again. Okay, we're good, we're good. Oh, I'm starting to think we might make it. Forrest, can I have a word? No, Peggy. Now? Now isn't the best time, Peggy. Can it wait? Forrest, it's kind of important. Oh right. my god, Peggy. Casey, what? I'm going to have a quick word with Peggy. Keep putting that pressure on and let us know when the bleeding is under control. You're doing great. We'll still be here. Just shout if you need anything, and we'll be there. I promise. Okay. I'll wait. Jason, please be okay. Peggy, we don't have time for your bullshit. What's up, Peggy? We can't stay on the line with her all night. We gotta save Dawn this bitch. Dawn is still out there. What if other people need us? <sighs> You're right. She's probably on her way to her next target right now. I don't even know exactly. who the Why and would she go after... We Ricky. need someone there with training who can stabilize him. Yeah. He's got to get to the hospital somehow. She's going to have to carry his ass. She said there was a car there. I know she doesn't know how to drive, but we may not <gasps> have a choice. She doesn't know how to drive? Idea. Never mind hurting Jason. She might get herself or someone else killed. <sighs> well, he doesn't Don't have time. Do you have any ideas then? I might. A little before you started working here... KFAM did a mandatory first aid training course. Me and Karen missed it because we were away on a producer getaway. You skipped it, didn't you? You skipped I, a bitch. Never mind. Peggy, this is all your so, fault. How does KFAM's first aid course help us? Casey said they're at 25 Nancy Drive, right? Yes. Yeah? Why? They put up a bunch of cheap houses around there about 10 years ago. So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. Do you think any of them could help Casey and Jason? Probably. But I don't know who lives there. And since I missed the how is this helpful, day, Peggy? I don't know who knows first aid. Peggy, how is this helpful? I don't know everybody's numbers. Oh my god. I've only ever called Karen. Everybody's personnel info is probably in oh, Reggie. Reggie, that's office. his name. I was right. Got it. I'll look through their files in Reggie's office. It's a life or death situation. I'm sure they won't mind. Right. But there are a couple of problems with that. Reggie is the one that orchestrated this whole thing, naturally. naturally. It's sensitive information. So Reggie probably locked it in his safe. I'm gonna crack Great. that safe. Great. Do you have any idea what the combo for the safe could be? Not a clue. Reggie's a serial note taker, though. Maybe something in his office will give it away. Right. There is something else. Peggy, he's bleeding out. Moment. Can you just you summarize? The future is floppy. Oh my Peggy, god. What the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about floppy disks. Floppy disks are like these futuristic things that have information on them. You put them in a computer and they do something. I forgot this was like 80s style, so floppy, floppy disks, disks are new. <laughs> anyway, Reggie decided that the future is floppy and started phasing out our physical records and replacing them with these floppy disks. It's still a physical I copy. It's the same for our personnel files. That's Luckily, good I'm know. an expert. Since we haven't heard anything from Casey, I'm guessing Jason's okay for now. I'll check out Reggie's office but and see her on hold. Try. How could we you possibly hear from her? I'll just slide it under my door now. Thanks, Peggy, Peggy, you have all the keys. I just have to look around. Good. I'll patch my mic down to the office so you'll hear me over the intercom. Here we go. Damn, Reggie. Your shit is not my Looks shit. Looks like I need a four-digit code. Very important date. Uh. Very important date. 1987. This is very important. Nope. Nope. That's not working. Must be something else. Um. Can't read that. It's all squiggles. Okay. 19. What did I say? 1987? 87. Did I say 78 or 87? 
about 1977. Nope, oh, okay. Uh, something else. Ooh. Uh, Reggie's birthday is 9-10, not 10-9. So, 0 9 10. Oh, where's the red thing? Ten nine, maybe it's the backwards. Neither one of those. I feel like those are important dates, huh? For for Ridge. Ridgey. Act forever, need to write pitch document, good title, bring back original protagonist and villain. Those. What in the name of fuck? Ask Genie where those tapes are. We're due. Clive, if you're reading this, stop stealing my post it notes. Lol. Who's this? Well, something video VHS. Alright, he's gonna have a floppy. Oh, well, oh, there you go. There's a floppy. Just one. Stay closed. Just one. Alright, well. Loading. Pizza delivery the killer. This be it. Terrifying as every pizza would happen to the original delivery guy. Protagonist, blah, blah, blah. 1107. Very important date. Bam, that's it. 11. Zero, seven. Nice. There we go, baby. Oh my god. He's got six floppy disks, and I've got to look through all of these. Ugh. Yeah, <laughs> That's, he said the same thing I was saying. Alright, I'm taking this floppy, so I got his name. John Hedges. Wait, can I tell you? Hey, Peggy, you there? It's Hedges. Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? Yep. I think I know who our best bet is to help Casey and Jason. Hedges. Right, good work. Who should I... Hello? Can oh I my god, there? Casey. Please pick up. Casey, I'm here. What's wrong? I'm Casey here. Started going pale. Oh, he's dying. I tried to get him to rest, but he just threw up everywhere. Punctured his guts. What's happening? What do I do? Uh, he's going into god, shock. Sounds like he's going into shock. Casey, just stay calm. It's going to be okay. Casey, calm down. You've done everything right. I I need you to listen to me, okay? For Jason. Maybe he was drinking. What did the nurse say to do about shock? Elevate his legs. Casey, I need you to elevate Jason's legs. We need to get the blood flowing to his vital organs. Got it. Jason, stay with me. Jason. I'm just going to move you. This Jason. Okay. Save his life, though. I'm looking at my notes. Well, we need to get Jason as warm and comfortable as possible. Do you have anything you could use nearby, Casey? Use your jacket. Yeah. I still have some laundry next to me. And your jacket. I'll wrap him in some blankets. Oh, that was Just a good give call. Me a second. Mm. Yep, yeah, that's gonna hurt. Sorry, sorry. Jason's bleeding through his bandages. Should I get him new ones? No. Or... Oh, God. By additional Don't bandage. The bandage. Apply another one on top of it. Do you still have something you can use? I've used the rest of the laundry to keep him warm, so... Clean the rags. I'll use my jacket. Oh, well, that works. I can always get a new one. I'll fix his bandage and get him warm. Hold on, please. <sighs> sorry, sorry. I'm done. We saved him. Oh, you're gonna be. What was that? It's gonna be fine. Jason is going to be fine. Just make sure he knows he's gonna be okay. Okay? Okay. Please. I, I can't give him what he needs. Yeah, more blood. Please. Medical yeah. emergency okay, assistance. Right, Stitches. Probably hurry. a knife pulled out of his Jason leg. Doesn't sound like he's doing too well. Yeah, no shit. You said you knew who to call earlier. Who was it? John Hedges. 
Call Karen, that bitch. We need to call John Hedges. <laughs> Tell he her to get first aid training next time. He didn't really participate in the first aid training, but he's a former war man. Oh, he's the he's guy. Probably the most trained person we have. He's for really? sure the guy. I never really spoke to him before. A war medic, huh? Yeah, and according to Reggie's notes, John keeps all of his old equipment at his house. He's something of a hoarder. All right. What's his number? Uh, five four two zero seven three five. Calling now. Let's help me pick. Who the hell is this calling me? At? John, we need your help. What time is it? John, it's time for you to save a life, John. K fam, we have an emergency and we need your. Never help. too late to save a life. Forrest, if this is a work emergency, it is indeed. Wait until the goddamn morning. It cannot. Just leave me a note like everybody else. No, no, no. Somebody's the man has stab. been stabbed by the whistling man. Or, never mind. He's lost a lot of blood. And he's passed out. We need you to help him. The whistling man? What kind of joke is this? John, we're not kidding. A man is gonna die if we don't help him right now. Seriously? I, yeah, I, seriously. I haven't been called on for over 10 years. Where's the patient? What's his condition? He's at 25 Nancy Drive. I think we got his friend to stem the bleeding, but he's gone into shock. He's passed out right now. You say he was stabbed? Do you know the extent of his injuries? From what we were told, yes, he has two major stab wounds. One to the stomach, and one to the leg. The knife is still in his leg, and the stomach wound is open. Understood. Let me grab a few supplies, and I'll head right over. Damned if he dies on my watch. Thank Good you, man, John. John. We'll let him know you're on your way. Good luck. Hello, Casey. Are you there? How are we doing? Bad. Jason seemed really weak. Are we seizing? What about now? Is he still thrashing? He's passed out! Please tell me you found someone to help! I Casey, did. help is on the way. My colleague will be there soon. You hear that, Jason? Someone is coming! You're gonna be just fine! Just hold on for me, okay? Just hold on! He's gonna be okay. Come on! Hello, Casey. This is John Hedges. John to the rescue! He got there quick. Please let me in. Good man. Good man. I'm guessing that's Jason there. Casey, I'm gonna need your help. Forrest, Peggy, don't you two worry. We've got this from here. Okay. Forrest, we'll call you back later. I have to go now. All Good right. luck, everyone. Get him to the hospital. God, I hope he's gonna be all right. He's gonna be fine. And with that, the show moves on. We're sending our best wishes to Jason. Hopefully. Oh, yeah. Well, after all that excitement... I'm not even in the radio room. I think we could use some music. Let me get back up there. Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. I'm ready. Well, let's just go with the flow, crying for help. Damn. Hope you enjoy this one as much as I do. It's getting pretty late. Yeah, it is. This might be Good your morning. last break for the night, so try to enjoy it. I'm enjoying Give it, Peggy. Give me a buzz when you want to go back on air. I'm enjoying it. <laughs>